10, 9, ignition sequence starts, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome to the Alien Probe Podcast. It's May 20th, and in this week, congressional UAP hearings, the UFOs are out. The aliens are out. We know where they all are. We know when they happen. We know where they happen. We know where all the crashes are stored. We know where all the formaldehyde aliens are. Joining me today again is Dr. Bill. And I know, Bill, everything, we know everything now, right? I mean, everything, everything's ready. We know. Yeah. We know everything now, right? Yeah, they revealed everything in the meeting. They didn't, actually. <laughs> and... I, and I, and I don't think that the uh, UFOs are stored in Wright Patterson. No, I think I disagree. I think if they were there, where do you think they are? I don't know. I don't think they would be there. That's too long ago, and it's had too much attention on it. Uh, remember, there was the thing about Jackie Gleason, uh, Richard Nixon yes. taking Jackie Gleason to see a, a base in Southern Florida. So yes, some place like there, or somewhere like um, I don't know somewhere else not there maybe the batil institute which did research for project blue book so something like that i don't know did they uh, tell us did they tell us where they were at bill no they didn't and say what say they anything. were and where where they are and no. what we're seeing and i guess there's some flying pyramids or something i don't know so they had some pictures <laughs> they showed they showed two videos one of them they said they had identified that they were UAPs or UF uh, drones and that they were triangular. And the reason they were triangular was because it was through a night vision goggle and a DSLR and it gave it a tri triangular shape. But that didn't apply to the video that they were showing. They just learned that from another case where they were, um, saw a similar sort of thing, but I guess, I don't know, that wasn't clear. And then they showed a video of, uh, something that briefly flashed by a uh i don't think it was a fighter jet i think it was some sort of uh, reconnaissance plane and that showed um it, that was a demonstration to show how fast and how quick these events happen but anyway it was uh so it was the first congressional hearing on ufos since 19 actually since 1968 and the late 60s you had um i sent you the i sent you the pdf for that 19 april 5th 1966 um the hearing by on the hearing by committee on armed services is a house of representatives 89th congress second session uh, unidentified, unidentified flying objects was in April 5th, 1966. And then there was another hearing, which I printed this out. These are all on the intertubes where you can find them. Um, <laughs> this one's hefty. Uh, and then there was another hearing on UFOs, and this was called the Symposium on Unidentified Flying Objects Hearings Before the Committee on Science and Astronautics U.S. House of Representatives, Representatives, and this was the 90th Congress, second session, July 29th, 1968, number seven. I don't know what that means. Did, we uh, find any, did you read that? That looks pretty big. Did you read it? Yeah, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> it's like every time, you know, it's funny because we got the... Um, we got that report last year on UFOs that was given to Congress. It was 13 pages long. And, uh, you know, this is the, this first congressional hearing. This is 85 pages. The second congressional hearing on UFOs in 1968 is uh, 215 pages. And then in the, I think it was in the 80s or 90s, they came out with re those reports debunking. The Air Force came out with reports debunking Roswell, they came out with two reports. The first report came out 500 pages long. You can get that on, on the internet. And then they came out with a second report a few years later explaining what the alien bodies were and saying that they were crash test dummies from these balloon experiments. And that report was 500 pages long. And it's like, 
But then the last report that we got to Congress was 13 pages long. It's like in the past, if they did anything, if you look at any, oh, and then there was the, uh, a few years ago, there was a committee that was doing an expose of, of uh, UFOs at the National Press Club. This might've been 10 years ago or something like that. That report was 500 pages long. So it's like 500 pages seems to be like the standard thing for these reports. And then last year we get a report that's 13 pages long. So. 500 is the amount where we look at it and go, we're not reading that. I'm not reading that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take your word for it. Oh, I, I, I really want to, I really want to try and read those, some of those things. Um, but oh, 500 pages. And then in 1969, uh, 60, sounds like, sounds like our Aztec book. Was that 400? That's 500 pages. Yeah. And yeah, we're, we're going to go same through same thing. 500. So on December 26 and 27, 1969, there was a UFOs, a scientific debate, which was put together by the American association for the advancement of science. That was a big deal, 1969. And then also in 1969, um, there was the Condon Report, which was the scientific study of unidentified flying objects, which even though they couldn't identify 20% of the sightings, basically said that the uh, people seeing UFOs were suffering from psychological hysteria. So this was the state of that, your, yeah that that deal I sent you that YouTube thing I got through part of it but which one the, the Australian guy oh yeah the, you uh, sent that guy. to me no I sent it to you I did send it to you but <laughs> I started it. watching it yeah. and it's gigantically long but he did mention because he's a journalist that talks about I should have his name but I don't uh, he talks about um, how he is a journalist and he's talks to spies and all this different things so i guess he, oh. you know, he's on the inside of a lot of it that might be worth and out. um yeah it's it's pretty interesting but but he part of what he was saying is that ufos he doesn't believe because he can't put his hand on it it's kind of like we do it's like i haven't seen one and you haven't put my hand on one and nobody why are there so many cameras and there's 800 million cameras or billion cameras in the world and we're not getting anything and uh he says there's a there's also discussion out there that he heard that they're not real it's a psychological it's some sort of weird psychological that the military actually has the military either two things the military actually has these and we're trying to we're letting this out to tell the chinese hey don't screw around because these are actually something we have, although we're not saying that. We're just reporting it through these weird tic tac things and these other reports and things like that. And the other thing is it's psychological. There's that there's some weird psychosis that goes on with the people that are seeing them, which is that's an old story where you're something's making, you know, it but it's it's not just by person. It's some some there's a force making us see these things. It's bizarre. I mean, that was a pretty bizarre story. I, I've seen. Him, I mean, I don't know. I've seen some of his reporting, so I will uh, try and. He's get good. To, I'll I try mean, and look is, at that. He's good. Yeah, but like, he's like, I haven't seen anything. He goes, people tell me stuff, and in they like a spy will tell him things, and that they, they want him to report it, although it's a lie, to because he's oh yeah they're respected yeah. So they use him as a conduit for their garbage. And he goes, I'm yeah. not doing that. He goes, he usually, he, cause he investigates and of course finds out that whatever's not real. Yeah. They're and trying so to, he doesn't report it. They're trying to plant misinformation for their adversaries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The guy interviewed him. We talked about the cattle mutilations and yeah, I'm not sure. About are, that. are there people, are there people mutilations? And but the cattle mutilation, I mean, we've talked about the UFOs putting off radiation and hurting people by because of their propulsion systems. I oh. mean, it's it like, oh. are oh. we exposing these cattle to this? And then, like, I, I, um, I'm, 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 I think the cattle mutilations was just good press. I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look into that. I've read yeah, some stuff on cattle mutilations. A lot of the stuff that I've seen suggests that, um, 
it's just predation. Cow dies, it's predated, somebody got excited, started reporting stuff, but we'll see. Um, the radiation stuff is, is I'll talk, I'll do shorts on, I think some radiation stuff, but the, yeah. um, the guy who flew too close to the UFO and um, crashed, Mantel. Yeah, the he, P-51 dude. His plane was radioactive when they checked it. And then they said that uh, any plane that, you know, planes flying around get radioactive. And then that guy, Chris Leto, said, he goes, that's ridiculous. This is the guy that's the fighter pilot. Uh, yep. He says, that's ridiculous. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> we'd all be having, all pilots would be having all sorts of problems. And I've been dying to, like, be, I can't, you can't, I can't do this these days. You can't go over to an airport and, like, run a Geiger counter on a bunch of planes and see what, see if it's it's above background you can do that but you might somebody may ask a question or two <laughs> yeah i don't want to you're next to the faa be coming in on you yeah so, I, I mean airport security is a big deal so i don't think that even at the private the little airports i don't think i, I don't want to risk it and go in there and you know cause people to freak out because some weirdo wants to measure radiation on their airplanes um i mean the okay, best thing is just bring get, bring yeah. a geiger counter on a plane when you go on a flight and uh, let's see if... Oh, then I'll enjoy that, too. Yeah, just turn the sound off. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> hey, I was... Uh, Can you imagine somebody in the seat next to you? They got this thing, like, what the... Just turn the sound off. You can just you just watch the meter. You just turn the sound off. I would be freaked out if somebody did that next to me. I'd be like, what are you doing? Well, we'll see. We'll but see now if I we travel I anywhere. We... Out. What's that? If we travel anywhere, I'll make sure I'll bring a, a Geiger counter. Yeah, just make sure. No, yeah, we'll have to pay for three seats. <laughs> we want, we're leaning over. But what the hell, <laughs> stewardess? Stewardess, we have some nuts on board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be like fun. An air marshal That'd be attacked awesome. by the air marshal. Yeah. Fellow passengers, oh, what are they doing? They're trying to crash the plane. They're they're gonna, have this well, you got a Geiger counter. Um, yeah. Well, you see, it's because this this aircraft has probably been exposed to uh, UFOs and we it's were probably just radioactive. checking. We're just that'd worried. Be, that'd be we're, the best. We're just it's a safety. <laughs> we're it's just a safety thing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's go on with the the meeting. It was May seventeenth, oh, the congressional hearing. Yeah, May seventeenth. Oh, or are you going to go through the history? Then we'll talk about it. 2022. Yeah, I'm not going to do any of it in the history. Okay. I just mentioned the uh, the past reports. I mean, there was the late 60s. There was a ton of stuff. I mean, two congressional hearings. There was a, a scientific meeting on it. There was the, um, you know, the Edward Condon study that came out and said, you know, mass hysteria and psychological blah -de blah And this is, this is the yeah. reason, this is the reason that the uh, UFO, um, just went to, you know, the media just went and said, oh, it's all people, just hoaxes and crazy people. And yeah. yeah, now we're at the point where it's like, wait a minute, there's something going on. And yeah, I don't, uh, people do raise some good points with like, why aren't there more pictures or, or stuff like that? But there are really good pictures out there. There was one that uh, I think I just sent you where in South America, they were doing an aerial survey and one photo shows a, a clear UFO in it from the aerial su survey. There was the guy that took a um, really good photos with a Polaroid camera that are fairly compelling in, in uh, California, Southern California. And uh, McDonald actually thought there might be some problems with one of the photos because of the, the overcast was, the cloud was different than the other photos, but I don't know. But the po photos are pretty compelling. There's a recent article, which I mean in the last 20 years, with a reanalysis of those photos, which were finally given back to the, the I think the guy that took the po photos because they were taken by somebody pretending to be an Air Force officer or an Air Force officer. And um, the people that had the original photos were trying to work with the document documentary film crew and the people that had the photos found out that they couldn't really use couldn't even use these photos because technically they didn't own the the copyrights on them so whoever had taken these photos from the guy that had taken them ended up returning them to them 
because they were useless to him. And then the original photos were reanalyzed, and there's a paper talking about that, but I'll get to that. We'll get to that at some point. Um, so the congressional meeting was interesting. The, the committee has 23 members on it. It has an open and a closed session. Only 10, nine of the uh, members were present for the open session, and I'm sure all 23 showed up for the closed session. Uh, the first, the good stuff, yeah, the good stuff, the secret stuff that we, yeah, they, know. they did one thing I thought was interesting. Yeah. That they said that a lot of the things there was the guy, um, Ronald Moultrie, uh, USD INS United States department of defense, intelligent and security chief. Uh, he, he kept saying, um, we, we ha we can discuss that with some of these questions. He would go. We can discuss that in the closed session. So, uh, but That's the guy, the I yeah. mean, what, is, what, what is secret? I mean, I've, you've, they're treating us like idiots. This is so stupid. It's like, you want us to, you want to get it out or you don't you want to get it out? You know, it's like, we're the ones asking the questions and you're giving us nothing of sub, sub, substantial well, they, stupid. Well, they keep talking about, I mean, they're saying it's, uh, you know, the sensors and the techniques and the, uh, yeah, but basically the technology. I'm trying to get my handkerchief. Um, they're saying they just can't release, you know, secret stuff, secret sauce, no secret sauce. So the guy that introduced it, I think it was uh, Mr. Crawford. He was Republican from from Arkansas, which is unusual for him to start off the meeting. Maybe he's the one who called it because uh, Schiff, for a Democrat from California, is the chairman of the the committee. And you know, you know Schiff, he's in the news all the time. Uh, but Crawford, he said that the, uh, he said UFO, UFO, UFO UAPs are a security threat and they are real. Uh, he says, uh, wanted to know the purpose of the meeting was to know the status of the organization, organization and not how uh, they're looking into UFOs, status of how it's being organized. Um, uh, he wanted to make sure that, uh, UFO witnesses, UAP, UFO witnesses were being treated as witnesses and not being treated as cook, cooks, cooks. Um, and he wanted to emphasize that all conclusions of what UFOs, UAPs are, are on the table. Uh, let's see. What else did he say? Air hazard is a big deal. New tech by adversaries. The big concern is that this, the stuff that we're seeing, like the flying uh, cube with a sphere around it, that they that's 15 to 30 feet wide that there's been seeing at the, um, like when the uh, gimbal, gimbal video was shot. So one of the things that they saw was this cube with a sphere around it, 15 to 30 feet. And they're saying that's a legitimate uh, not in this video, but if there's another video with the guy that was a um, pilot that was seeing this stuff, um, he gave a talk about how these are important safety hazards because they they literally this this thing would fly between jets when they're out cruising doing their missions, their training missions. So it's air hazard. New tech by adversaries is a big deal. And you were just saying that. Um, the concern is like that, re that interview with that reporter is this is basically us showing off, being able to sort yeah. of leak the information that this is our super tech yeah. and to be That's wary of it. Stated. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. I still think that I don't know when they go into the secret meetings. Oh, okay. No. Okay. When they say we can't talk about this because it's secret. Well, just tell us, okay, it's it, we we can't discuss it because it's involves propulsion. It's some camera. What the fuck is it? That we can't know. You know what I mean? That the public can't know. I mean, is it? it, it, it don't tell us any technology that we have that you use to get this. Tell us what we know. We don't care about the freaking. Yeah what we use to get it that's secret, we want to know what it is. Yeah. It's stupid. It's yeah. killing me. I yeah. mean, this is why the public's pissed off, because they treat us like children. 
you know it's, we are children and it's like we are children. yeah i agree we are oh i am you know i act like it most of the time but we're uh, you know we're all we're, we we don't we don't know we can't handle the truth you can't handle the we can't handle the truth uh what else do they say so Bad. uh Schiff, uh crawford oh he said actually this is interesting he says um he's more interested in for this meeting He's more interested in um, finding out why we don't have hypersonic weapons, whereas the Chinese and the Russians have, have developed them, and our, uh, Russia has been apparently been using them in the Ukraine. YouTube says we have hypersonic. I saw hypersonic they missile, just, the U.S. hypersonic missile. They just had a success, the first successful test of a hypersonic missile. But uh, Russia and China have them. They're ready to be, they're deployed. They're part of their arsenal, their working arsenal. So yeah, I mean, there's that. Uh, so he said that was a big concern. Uh, uh, air hazard. Uh, okay. And then uh, Mr. Schiff from California, he said the national security matter said we can measure this phenomena. So basically you have uh, the leading Democrat, the leading Republican in this committee saying that UFOs are a real this UAP UFO issue is national security issue. It's a real phenomena and it's a real security threat, I think. Not an immediate security threat, but a potential security threat. And then uh, Ronald Moultrie, who's the director of the USD INS. And we also talked about that guy that was fired for inappropriate touching or something. And he, yeah, yeah. this is the, this is, I think, Ronald Moultrie is his replacement, but I'm not sure. I didn't research that, but it's, it's the INS is part of that. So he says that oh, they, what's that? I thought they promoted the girl that was involved or something. Didn't they? It wasn't I the, think, the oh, female the, that was involved in the situation. The, maybe wasn't into that position. The touchy, uh, one of yeah. the touchies. She was, uh, yeah, touchy she, guy. yeah, she was promoted into something, but the, uh, this guy, I mean, he's the face. They usually bring the big guys out. Or I don't know. I don't know what his position is. Yeah. I don't care. He was very good. He was very uh, forthright. I'll, he he was a very good spokesman for this, whatever his position is. Uh, he says they now have a dedicated office for processing, analyzing, and reporting UFO data. Um, so there's a big part of it. I guess they want to take make sure that the data is uh, collected and correlated and act accessible at like a central location for people to, um, you know, for analysis, which is important. You should have, it, the, the data should come to a central place. It should be, you know, accessible through whatever, because different instruments may, may uh, record in different formats. So you want to make sure that whatever format it's on, we, we've all, we've all experienced format problems in this day and age. So they want to make sure that they, it's accessible and, um, An analyzable, analyzable. The secret bill is that there's something out there and we can't figure out what the hell it is. That's what we, they don't want us to know that we yeah. just can't figure it uh, out. What, <laughs> and they, what, they think that's the scary part. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause I've been reading, yeah. um, I've been reading a book. It's over there. Um, which I'll grab. I've been reading this book, which is sort of interesting. Um, this is uh, Flying Saucers from Earth and Beyond by Gordon Lore. And he was a kid. He's a kid who started working for NICAP in the uh, 60s, late 60s. And the stuff he's been talking about, and it's sort of like, it's semi-autobiographical, like his life as a UFO investigator, which is cool. It's a cool read. And he, um, the thing is, he, he talks about these sightings that were coming in the NICAP in the 60s when, you know, all this stuff was happening. The, the Condon report, the scientific meeting, these, these were a big deal. The congressional, congressional meetings, the last time they had congressional meetings. Lots of UFO sightings and lots of um, really good sightings. The one I just talked about on the short was from his book where the guy was shooting at it with a 22 Magnum. And uh, uh, 
You need to use some. You need to use something bigger if you want to shoot yeah, a UFO. Well, That's not going to cut it. Hey, <laughs> you use you use the tools you you got, and uh, yeah. yeah, it was That's uh, a one step above a pea shooter. It's well, 22. twenty twenty two Magnum is yeah. pretty pretty hefty. I mean, the, the yeah. they'll, yeah. they'll 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 uh, they'll they'll work against a lot of stuff. I'm, and most I'm thinking people, more along the lines of four, 460 Weatherby would be my weapon of choice. Or a 50 cal, a Barrett. <laughs> yeah, well, a Barrett. It's harder to get that. I can get a 460. I might be tough to get a 50 cal. Yeah, but yeah, that where you live it is. But yeah, you can get a Barrett. Uh, I, I think they're outlawed in California. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, of course they are. So yeah, um, outlawed in yeah, California. yeah a, Bar a Barrett. Everything's probably. outlawed in California. I'm amazed we're able to lock walk down the street. They're gonna, they're gonna out, they're gonna outlaw alcohol next. Yeah, well, you're gonna get a neighbor. It's gonna be me. <laughs> well, if you want to do a side thing, it's like one of my pet peeves is that you're old, 18 years old. You can they can ship you off to war to die, but you can't drink a beer. Yeah, I, I was like, what's agree. that? That's I agree just, with that. I mean, that's insane. We can drink a beer if you're on post. You Not can anymore. Drink on base. No. They changed it. Oh, they did it. They changed they the years. That? Oh, they changed man. that in the eighties. I could dream. I remember. I was in at nineteen and I was drinking. Yeah, they changed it. <laughs> yeah, they changed it in that the eighties. Uh, yeah, I remember when they made the change. It's just like I just thought it, I could remember the complaints because I was, I was in the reserves and the younger guys were just like incensed at this because you know, yeah, it stupid. Be. It's just stupid. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, it's just insane. So yeah, if uh, you can't drink at eighteen, you shouldn't be allowed to be drafted or or um it's know, shot at go, go to war yeah yeah <laughs> get killed you're not you're not you know, you're, you're not old enough sent to... home in a box but you're you not... can't drink yeah. yeah yeah and in uh europe uh 16 alcohol and in most countries in europe alcohol and beer 16 it's fine no problem do they have less problems with alcoholism i wonder because uh... they don't allow people to drink late at 21 I don't know. It's it's hard to twenty one. You know, kids are going to be kids, and and you know, you're always going to have kids binge drinking and and stuff like that. I honestly they'll find don't. A, they'll find a way. Yeah. Well, I think it's better. <laughs> it's better to um, to let the kids have access, and it's beer and wine until they're I don't know, like eighteen. So at sixteen, yeah. you can you can have a beer, you can have a wine, and. It, it seems to be okay in um, in Europe, and they don't seem to be too terrified at the prospect. Right. Uh, so anyway, so Moultrie said rigorous scientific analysis. He wants to make sure that the data can be, that the information or data can be isolated, characterized, identified, and mitigated, which I guess that's the aerial safety stuff that they're talking about. Uh, it says they're flight mitigated because they're a flight safety risk. Um, says they want to have the effort to determine origins uh they will examine oh will examine adversarial platforms breakthrough technologies this is stuff that they're they're researching now that the military what they're saying is they do not think this technology is from like china or russia and they're um i think they're pretty much saying that this technology is not our technology uh break so the U.S. government, uh, they want to make sure it's not U.S. government or commercial platforms, allied or other partner systems, and other natural phenomena. Or Elon the, Musk. Or Elon Musk. It's probably Elon <laughs> Musk. It's got to be Elon Musk. So the goal is to, and one oh, of their no. goals is to um, eliminate UFO stigma, which is, they're, they're doing that. And the uh, deputy director of Naval Intelligence, talked about that and that got a lot of press with, with what he said so this guy said the department's involved he says the dni um department of naval intelligence faa dhs fbi noaa dea national labs nasa are fully committed to openness but with security one organization he didn't mention and this is uh, chris mellon wrote an article about this is the air force is unusually silent about this which yeah i mean that's uh why is the air force you think being on the forefront of this one yeah i think the air force should have been involved in this um or something so um 
What else? Then Mr. Bray. About the Space Force. What about the Space, space Force, Force. Wasn't involved? Uh, I think the Space Force. <laughs> he did say that the Space Force was going to be involved. Space Force is involved. Oh, good. Yeah. Because this is kind of space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get the Space Force. So the Mr. Bray, the yeah. Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence, ONI, um, he says since early 2000, the sightings have been increasing, sightings in frequency, and it is continu continuing. Uh, issues, service flight hazards, threat to operation security, tactical observation, transition UFOs to anecdotal to scientific analysis is what they're pushing for, which is good. Um, I, I have to ask, I'll have to interrupt for a second. Yeah. Um, when, if they had Space Force, when we were, when we joined the military, do you think we would have went in the Space Force instead of the Marines and for yeah. you in the Army for me? Would, yeah. would you have went to Space Force instead? Yeah, absolutely. I know I would have. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't even thought about it. I would have done anything Any, to yeah. get into that. <laughs> just to, just to, yeah, I would have done it. If I was a file clerk, I would I be there. Just... Yeah, I agree. I agree. It doesn't matter. Yeah, same thing. Space Force. That'd be badass. Yeah. It'd be badass. I, I, would have, I would have, wouldn't even have thought about it. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> sign me up. I would have done, you know, sign me up. Just do it. I'm uh, in for 20 at least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Make it make it my life. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Absolutely. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I would have. I'm there. Uh, subject matter, bring in subject matter experts. And he says there, this is Mr. Bray again, Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence. He says, no easy answers. Then he showed the video of the um, thing flashing by, which just looks like um, he just wanted to show how quick these um, um, encounters occur. He just wanted to show that. And I'm not sure what this is. To me, it looked like it could be a... Um, uh, one of those silver balloons you get in the grocery store. So mylar, it, mylar balloon. Yeah, it's just. I mean that, and that's something they do see. So uh, he said that. Oh, and this got in the news. He said that there were four hundred reports of UFO sightings, and he says the reason for and that made a big splash in some of the news sites. He's saying the reports have increased because they have reduced the stigma for making the report and encouraged people to make reports. Uh, I think they're also doing a creating a, uh, a standard reporting protocol. Where, what an idea! What's up? Do the paper, <laughs> fill out the form. I can send them a form. form. I'll send them a form. I may I reproduce the blue book form. We'll send it to them. Uh, and then they no, that have. That was your invention. Don't don't let them know you stole you plagiarized <laughs> that. It's don't government. There's it. no copyright on government <laughs> crap. Um, government forms are not copyrighted. Government documents are not copyrighted. Um, and then the, uh, what they did in the meeting is they had, uh, a bunch of the nine congressmen that were actually out of the 23 that were actually in the meeting, asked a bunch of questions. Let's see if there's anything cool that happened. Um, oh yeah. The, uh, the guy, uh, Ronald Moultrie said he was a science fiction fan and he'd actually gone to science fiction conventions. So that's cool. Yeah, but that because we're, we're the only, we're the ones that are wondrous about this, you know, that think the possibilities there. Yeah, it's a win you that know? this guy's that way. He, yeah, I think so. You know, it's like he believes there could be something rather than the other guys going, nah, there no, can't be it's anything. Nothing. It's, mass, it's hysteria. <laughs> yeah. Psychological hysteria. It's mass hysteria. I don't know what's wrong with these people. <laughs> oh, the, um, I started to say this, the sightings in the late 60s, a lot of lights, different lights moving around and different colors and all this other stuff. Right. Like mine in my backyard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I'm pretty sure it's that a was, planet. I'm pretty no, it was a star. It's a planet. I don't know what it is. It so. was not a planet. Star. No planets in that position. I think it was that star, and it's a very bright star. It's pretty, pretty bright star. <laughs> it was a usually bright star, um, but that's the only thing that made sense when I did the, the, you know, ast astronomical analysis of your sighting. It's the only thing that that was what? there was a star. It's was there a star there? I yeah, didn't, I and it was. It's see. considered oh. a bright star. And yeah. well, years ago, I, I mentioned this years ago, I was 
hanging out in the parking lot and uh, looked straight overhead and there's this really bright light and the clouds were were streaming across and it made it look like the light was moving and I'm looking at it and I'm looking at it and I was like this is it's a, it's a, I see it I got one yeah I'm like it's a UFO um and so yeah so yeah and I think it might have been the same star it was in, just the site, the Probably. conditions were just right. The sky was very clear, and the star was it was amazingly bright. Uh, but I don't know. It might have been. Uh, it might have been Venus. <laughs> it's just like I don't know. I don't know. It's it was like, on your chart. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the pla the star that I sent you is the only one that I think it could be. Um. Okay. So let's I'll see. go with that. No, well, it's the best thing we can come up right now. I mean, it's. Debbie it's, said it was an airplane. And I go, it's not an airplane unless it's not moving. It wasn't moving, and it you just had the. Why was it? It did move. It did. It didn't move in thirty minutes, but a couple hours it did. So yeah, it's. Just, well, it should have been. It should have been. Yeah, you should, would have seen movement, and with the motion of the stars, yeah. since likely it's a star, or a planet. But I think it was. Yeah, a star. I went out the other night. It's still there, but it's not as bright. Yeah, so, I think it was. I think it's that that uh, that star. I don't remember which Cassiopeia. Maybe I can't remember which one I sent to you. Oh, okay. Um. So anyway, um, Moultrie's science fiction Crawford: How to prevent technical surprises from adver there. That main question is Crawford is a uh, from Indiana Democrat. He just wanted to make sure that this stuff wasn't uh, adversarial like Russian or Chinese technical advanced equipment that we don't know anything about. So that was his question. Basically the answer is we don't know. Uh, Schiff actually Schiff, you know, they, they, when you see Schiff in the news, he always looks like a crazy person. I don't know about the news that I look at, but he was really, he, I mean, I think he's a really sharp lawyer because um, he was asking good questions and he actually, the, one of the things about this meeting and they mentioned it at the end is there wasn't any controversy. So you had a Democratic and you had Republican congressmen acting like intelligent human beings having a conversation. And it was like, yeah, come on, you know, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's not hard. Uh, let's see. So Schiff wanted to get better look at the video and they screwed around with that. They weren't really repaired. Um, Flight characteristics. He asked about signal management, and uh, which is a something that I think some of these objects are doing. They are being they are able to detect when fighter aircraft are, you know, lazing them or using the radar on them, and they may be able to do deploy countermeasures. So that's something that's a big concern. And. Um, based on the analysis by that one guy from that one, that fighter pilot about UAPs as a flight hazard, uh, he was saying that they definitely will respond to contact by a fighter pilot, fighter plane, because they will, they'll drop down. What they'll do is they'll immediately drop down below the fighter, fighter and go underneath them. And he says, the only way you can keep an eye on them when they do that is if you, you flip inverted, which, you know, I don't think, I'm not hearing a lot of pilots doing that unless it's in Maverick. Wait, you, you didn't see Top Gun? Yeah. Yeah, see Maverick Top and, and Top Gun. Did you he see it? Did it. you see the new one? No? I oh, know. It's not out till the 27th. Oh, I, did, I didn't know. I didn't know that. I just, I don't keep track. I, I watched the trailer. I figured you got the pirate version. I go, no, where'd you no. get it? I want to see it right now. No, I don't have that. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I probably oh, will weekend. go out. i not opening. Oh, I'm probably... Oh, it's going to be big. It, next weekend, some point, I'm going to go see it because yeah. it looks good. And it's got a lot of good reviews. Very, I yeah. didn't see anything bad about it. Yeah, maybe I'll do that so too. We'll see. Let's see about going next weekend. Oh, maybe not. Although two weeks. Two weeks. The, the, two weeks. The new Avatar does look like it sucks. So, so. <laughs> yeah, I will Maybe go. the last one. <laughs> I, will go in, uh, I will go in two weeks when it's not the big crush on the weekend. Yeah, there's so few movies yeah. out there now. This is going to be huge. So it's going to be packed. The science seat, but yeah, you get it. It's just science seating, though. This is why I, oh, you yeah. don't have to yeah. worry about getting there early and getting a good seat. So Debbie just gets a seat. She gets an extra Modern. seat because she doesn't want, doesn't want to sit next to anyone. Oh, so she buys <laughs> so two she seats. Gets, 
she buys an extra seat. I don't care. So I just, I well, she gets me next to the wall. We sit on the end all the way in the back. Yeah. And then she gets an extra seat. So we're like on our own, basically on our own. It's, it's kind of people, usually there's a woman on the other side of her that puts all her purse and stuff in there. And say, Tell her that's your seat. Get your purse out of there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. I, I, um, I've, I've pretty much given up on going to movie theaters because it became such a waste of time and money because one, the it's different now cause it's digital, but I used to go and, um, the movies weren't in focus. So it's just like, you're going to see, you go into a movie and it's like, you're sitting there and it's like, just focus the damn movie. And it's like, they, it's like they forgot this was with film so it's been a long time and then they now with digital they can they are focused but yeah. it was so frustrating to go to these theaters and sit down no, and, they just and it's like focus the movie so i i pretty much yeah they just remember they sent the big packet of the giant you've seen them the film the yeah thing yeah the canisters the huge, film, yeah and it's all top secret now yeah. they just don't open there's a digital yeah. copy and they're just not allowed to open it till a certain point yeah and it's and, um, or they time stamped but it's just like or yeah uh, yeah so I, I i gave up on movie theaters because it's just like i got you know one you know they're dirty this you know they're dirty the theaters are dirty you're paying a lot of money um they weren't keeping the theaters up i know it's changed a lot with their they're becoming more marquee and more sort of upscale but I just got tired of crappy theaters, out of focus movies, and uh, you know, other mayhem. What we have the biggest problem with, we'll go off on the tangent here. Yeah. The crumpling of the paper. Oh yeah. Yeah. People are shoving food in their mouth, they're talking, yeah. a kid's crying, and they think nothing in the old days, oh God, you kick your kid and you take the kid out. Take him out. Yeah. I've done you know, because it's just a, I've done that. They with... don't care anymore. They just let the kid cry and disrupt the whole theater because they think it and I'm like, it's so inconsiderate. You I, can, just... I can remember doing and that with, with uh, my kid in the movie theater and, and I, 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 I have too. I go, well, we're gonna get out. Take him out. I took him out, take him out for a minute. Walk, walk yeah. around, he settles down and come back. I mean, it's okay. They don't do it anymore. I mean, they do, some do, but more often than not, they don't care about who they're inconveniencing. I'd be mortified. I'd be out of there. I'm like, I don't, don't like inconveniencing people. Well, it's, and, uh, it's, you know, they don't, it's the world. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a, a, there's definitely a, definitely a courtesy. People are crossing the street and the lights green and there's like strolling along. Oh, in California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Run out of the way. I will. I'm more afraid about getting run over, but I don't cross the street when it's green yeah. to the car. <laughs> but they don't care. Hey, you're not going to hit me. Well, and in, I'm just going to walk slow. Well, in Chicago, it's like I can remember my mom coming out and telling her if we were walking somewhere, especially in the winter time, um, it, it, and they warn you. It's like and people had warned me. He says you're from California. You're used to going in the cro cro crosswalk. And people stopping, and in the winter time in Chicago, you, a car cannot stop <laughs> safely. Yeah, they'll and, slide. And, yeah, and you will get run <laughs> over. So they're like, you need to, yeah. you need to wait till you need to, you know, be a courteous pedestrian, and you need to um, um, wait and then cross because you will get run down because the roads are icy, the cars cannot stop. Um, and I can remember um, getting some close calls, especially near the university when you know, people obviously from like California someplace just ambling into the into the crosswalk. And I, I missed oh, somebody wow. by about that much once. And the look on their face was great. Yeah. I, I'm like, look at what? <laughs> yeah. yeah you like it. And I think I had the I think I had the. Uh, brakes on but the car was just doing its thing and the and i looked at the guy you know i got the fighting yeah i got the brakes i'm trying not to to lose control of the car and the the guy in the crosswalks got this look on his face as i scooted by him and i literally missed him by that much and it's like yeah yeah, yeah. and it's and they're and the police are just going to say it's 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 not um 
not my fault. They're going to say, hey, they won't, stepped in front of you. They've actually changed the laws in California where um, if someone steps in front of you, although it's California, you're going to get sued and screwed anyway. Um, yeah, it's, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be their fault. But, oh, yeah. Like, the like, pedestrian? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're, they'll never do that. They're supposed to. They're that supposed to. Happen. They're not supposed The law is you're not supposed to step out unless it's clear. But then it's like I can remember coming back from California and driving in Berkeley. And it's just like the same thing. People just like step out. It's like. And it's like. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> yep. Oh they don't god. care. Oh, oh my god. So anyway, um, all right. The uh, let's quickly through the last few notes on Dr. Weinstrup from Ohio. He's an MD. He was more. I have to know. I have to know what we've come up with. Yeah, he was more. <laughs> uh, blah, blah blah. He didn't have anything exciting to say. Sensor data, physical object. Blah blah blah. Uh, allies have seen China. Oh, uh, and then the guy responded um he said the allies have a ronald moultrie responded to his question the people i should say when these questions are being asked by the congressman they are mostly answered by um ronald moultrie and some of them are answered by um mr bray deputy director of naval intelligence um moultrie said that allies have seen uf uaps and china has a ufo task force um and then, um, what's that? China has their China encourages their citizens to report to the yeah. government. They yeah. have like move like we have move on. Yeah, they have organized more than one organization over there that actually the government encourages them that encourages them to have these organizations and to report to the government what they're seeing, which is really interesting. I, I found. Oh yeah, I like uh, I. Uh... I know. Yeah, the uh, um, yeah, probably theirs. I don't know. Yeah, I just read a <laughs> I, I just read an analysis of um, what would happen if we were. I hear the frog. You hear the frog. Um, if we had an if we went to war with China, um, an analysis of what would happen. It's absolutely nuts. It's because what every would happen. Uh, go into any any uh, store like Walmart or Target. Anything made in China is going to disappear within a month. So what's going to be left in, in Walmart or Target? You're going to have food. And nothing. And nothing else. Some food, well, based on what's going on now, it might even yeah. add to that. And so basically... They'll just destroy, you know, just starve us to death. Well, it's, it's <laughs> just... We won't have any clothes. Yeah. You just like take this. There's going to be no clothing. There's going to be no, you know, kitchen appliances. There's going to be no, you know, textiles. There's going to be nothing. No apply nothing the only yeah. thing there is going to be like some food and then uh and then it gets worse because it's also like car parts spare parts there's gonna be no spare yeah. parts i mean we're gonna be scrounging in in um, junkyards if your car needs a spark plug no spark plugs well spark plugs last a long time yeah but no parts well, no spare pool parts in, pool it pool industry is already suffering with that i mean we have one vendor in particular that we can't get pumps from China uh, to any great extent. Yeah. And, well, we get the pumps. I don't really know what's going on. I think it's a chip. They keep saying, oh, it's a chip yeah, that we get yeah, from them. Yeah. Well, that's and a... I, there's another vendor that has plenty of pumps. So I don't know if we're getting those from somewhere else. I don't know the inside story of it, but it's interesting because we have one vendor that's got everything and we got another one that's struggling. They do have pumps, but they're um, flowing in at a much slower rate. And it's hard to build a successful pool without a pump. Yeah, I think <laughs> so you need a pump. It got, it got a lot of filters and heaters. <laughs> I just what, don't what, have any pumps. I, I do not think pools are a green technology. So yeah. California should outlaw pools. I mean, and they're what? They well, waste water. Well, they, they waste they, energy. They should outlaw them. You should be writing your um, your state representative to to do something about pools. I'm probably not going to do that. Well, they already, they require very, I don't know if you knew this, they require variable speeds now where for the pumps, a single speed pump are no longer allowed. No, you can't not for anything oh. anymore. It used to be just for your main pump, but now 
we're no longer able to pretty much get they're scarce you can get them but yeah when somebody calls and asks for a single speed pump you got to steer them they have them but they're they can't be over one to, one horsepower total so over one horsepower total horsepower is that's an energy a energy energy three quarter thing. horse energy use yeah thing? They, okay the pump can only be three quarter horsepower uh really and then a total horsepower because it has a service factor uh, math so uh, yeah i don't think that um, i mean it's it's the, 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 the amount of energy to move physical things is going to be fixed no matter what so i don't even know if that makes sense so it's like you're going to run your pump for a certain period of time to do whatever you need to do and then it's going to stop so uh i think it's just a matter I, I don't believe anything anymore uh everything is nuts so I don't know. I don't know. You, um, yeah, I think you figured out in about ten seconds what the rest of us already know. Yeah, I mean, it's just those, I, okay. Yeah, I mean, you see, you I work in variable. I run, I run it at a thousand RPMs for eight hours, or I got a single speed and I run it for three thousand RPMs for two hours. Yeah, and it's going <laughs> to use it turns the pull over the same. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> amount of energy involved in either case, except the one oh. is. Yeah, it's like uh, come yeah. on. I hate I hate these regulations. I mean, it's just like you got you got morons. They're morons doing these regulations, and they don't even think. I don't know how they do these analysis. It's just like I, I think they're all uneducated. They're all educated. They're all from you know the top common schools. sense. Yeah, they're all no from the top. Sense. Yeah, they're all from the top schools, but yeah. they don't have any sort of um, technical engineering or scientific training. They go, "Wow, oh, we need to do that. This makes sense. This this is good." Um, yeah. It looks like we're just going to, we'll just finish up the, uh, let me finish talking about the meeting and then we'll go, we'll do the, we'll do the Wilson memo next time. And move yeah, on. let's talk yeah. about Skinwalker though. We got to oh, yeah. do season three, oh, episode God. three of Skinwalker. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I forgot about Skinwalker. I got so, well, we'll finish up on the, the congressional thing. thing. Oh my yeah. God. All right. So we screwed up last week. We were saying it was season two because we had erased from our memories that um, that this yeah. was season three because we were so traumatized of from season one and season two of Skinwalker. Um, oh, oh my God! Which is the front page? Just the front. Um, so they keep pushing the malevolent intent. And uh, Travis Taylor, PhD extraordinary, is I, I you know the guy. If you watch his eyes, Travis Taylor, the the PhD astrophysicist, he blinks. The southern dude, the yeah. red haired southern dude, yeah. or the blonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He blinks in Morse code. Help me when he's on screen. Just watch his eyes, <laughs> and he'll he'll blink, and it's in Morse code, and it, he's he's blinking. <laughs> help me. Um, help make him help me. They're paying me. They're he's blinking. They're paying me, but I hate this. Help me. Um, oh my God. Uh, he's on every other show though. He was on the other one. They were tearing the sky. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like making the rounds. It's making the, making the moolah, making the money. Uh, making some money. Making some money. Hey, work it, work that, get it while you can. It's like, uh, from the producers, the old movie with zero Mustel, not the new one. Uh, he goes, he goes, um, flaunt it, baby, flaunt it while well, you're making it. Yeah. Flaunt you got it. it, flaunt it, flaunt it. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so they're trying to stimulate something in the sky, they uh, from the triangle. Uh, the rocket, the rockets are only 20 or 30 seconds, so they went up with an airplane. What about a drone? Yeah, what about a drone? Do you think, what about a drone? Well, no, they won't. That's boring. You got to be in an airplane when they got a new girl that's a pilot. Well, yeah. Not new, well, yeah. yeah, she's new to the show. Girl, woman, and the, the woman. ADSB, yeah, the, the the female, the ADSB failed during the flight, so they freaked out about that, and she freaked, she didn't, and then it made a big noise in there, which sounded like grinding when the ADSB <clears throat> was failing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so they had uh, uh, so they had a equipment malfunction on the plane. They loaded in uh, GPS, yeah. gamma ray, and all sorts of other stuff on the plane. Um, what was it? Oh, one of the screens they showed when they're showing the 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 
planes, the big monitor showing the airplanes in the area. So they couldn't see the plane they were seeing. But in the lower right corner of the screen, there was a plane doing a uh, search pattern. Yeah. So it's like, remember the last episode, it was like on the screen, it was yeah. over there, there, and like there are two episodes ago, it was like directly over the ranch. Now it was over here in the lower part of their screen. And it was just like, and it's the same plane probably doing a, a mapping. It's probably a geo, geo you know, a geo survey but, air mapping of, of the area. So, but they didn't mention that. They go, hey, it's over here but, now. Um, but the plane, but they saw a shadow of a plane following them at the same time. That I've I've had that same experience when I've been yeah. in small planes. I've had that experience too. Yeah, or a helicopter or, or a Huey when anything did that. you're flying in when you're close to the ground. Yeah, yeah. I I can remember hanging out the side of a Huey and looking down and watching the the shadow of the yeah. helicopter. Hmm, there's a helicopter. Look, there's, there's a hot, there's a plane. There's another <laughs> helicopter out here. Um. Well, then, then they had the thing where it showed them, they replayed them flying around with that grid pattern, but now it's 62 and a half miles oh, that's under the ground. That's interesting. <laughs> Let's see our, uh, the, the uh, what was that machine called? The ADSB uh, malfunctioned. Yeah. So, and then the, uh, they had five GPS trackers on the plane and, or, and, or five or six and, and five out of six stopped working. And they had one that had great data, but all of us, mysteriously, none of the, the uh, others worked. It's like they, you know, and then there was the echo in the control room. It's like our our technical equipment is is not working. It's a malevolent force. I mean, yeah, it's, right. kind of, it's kind of like some of our earlier episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's a, a malevolent, way to do that. It's a malevolent <laughs> force. Yeah, that's what was wrong with my, our audio. We had a malevolent force. Malevolent force. force. Uh, let's see. They went to the airport. They got the plane. They went and looked at petroglyphs. They had a really good, um, John Redbird Dover, who's an archaeologist, archaeological investigator for the Navajo Nation Ranger program, uh, just took them through and to talk about some of the petroglyphs in, in the area. And then he focused, and then of course they focused in on the spiral spiral. And he's like, spiral yeah, okay. represents a portal. And they got all excited. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I, that's another thing I wanted to bring up about this the, by the mound. Remember, they had the rock and the hole. Remember the yeah. hole in the rock, and it kind of resonated with me. The and he goes, you can when the sun comes up in the spring and summer, you, you can see it coming up through the you know, and you can see it on the horizon the if you look through the hole, right? Yeah, yeah. I just it, it flashed on me. I remember um, Journey to the Center of the Earth, the original, the good one. Yeah, and it. It, the way they found the entrance to the cave to go underground was, was the, the sun coming up and shining through this hole in the rock into, I go, I wonder if that's the thing. Is the sun going to come it? up and be, shine through this hole and point out where the, where the portal is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that also was in Lord of the Rings. It could be that easy. It was Lord of the oh, Rings. Same thing. Yeah, they, they showed up at this doorway, and I think the sunrise or sunset had to shine on the doorway mm -hmm. to activate it. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I I would have liked to have seen better mapping, because you can use... I I had the program to look for where that star was that you were seeing, and um, you could have just used any astronomy program to sort of map the angles and, and the time exact time that the sun would come through that that hole. So you could have, you could have mapped that out and, and got more information. Um, one of the things that they don't do that's really irritating, it's like you go up with the plane with all the GPS, they didn't mention anything about the Geiger counter or the cosmic ray detector or anything, detecting anything in the, in the plane, but there's something that yeah. you, you do and uh, their, their scientist, Travis Taylor, PhD extraordinaire, he should, he should be talking about this, this repro reproducibility. I mean, you go up, uh, if you have an equipment failure, you fix it, you do it again. And you do it two or three times. You just don't do it once and go, it's a malevolent force. Uh, and so you they, know, they got, they've got that magic thing that shows where all the planes are. That it, Their plane didn't show up on it, right? It's because the and planes... I, I know there's, there's something, I know there's special equipment that they've got. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's an app. It's free. That's a, that's a giant, <laughs> that's a giant iPad. 
Your, your iPad is huge. Um, Everything's bigger here. Yeah. It's big, big, bigger, <laughs> bigger in California. Bigger in California. Uh, more expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just times 10. Uh, so, yeah. Shadow of the plane. Uh, and then they're talking about the one, <laughs> 1. 1.2 gigahertz uh, record thing. I looked on Reddit, which I hate Reddit. Uh, but they were saying, um, some people in Reddit were saying it was a uh, harmonic for their for their equipment. So it's just like a, a, some sort of harmonic and it wasn't a big deal. But I don't know. I don't know. Reddit, it's, you know, you get information on the internet. Yeah, who knows? And they uh, said they're being eavesdropped on. They think they think that we're being because it's being on. fed back. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. Spied on. Who's spying on you? The space. The, <laughs> da, da, da. the interdimensional. <laughs> interdimensional. Oh, we're being spied on. Interdimensional space aliens are spying on us. Um. Yeah. That was about it. And then next week they're going to do yeah. do telescopes to look at the sky. Um, oh, there's something new. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so it's it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. That up. I will not keep my notes. Uh, the um, unlike unlike um, what's that? Uh, Blind Frog Ranch. Unlike Blind Frog Ranch, which actually has the potential to have genuine and interesting mysteries that you could explore, but not necessarily supernatural or space alien mysteries. Um, Skinwalker Ranch is really pushing it on, uh, you know, I don't know what, theater? I guess you would call it the theatrics. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just uh, um, bugs me. And then why are the, um, why are the security guys packing pistols still yeah so, uh, so i'm like well you know you got, might got attacked by whatever well i mean it's just like uh <laughs> out it's, there yeah is it is it because snake. of the snakes i mean yeah snakes. a glock is right. not snakes. a great thing for a snake you snake load yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. they could use snake loads those will work um it's probably more likely the reason they're carrying <laughs> that would be my guess is that you would just you load them up with snake loads and then um um, yeah use they work that. yeah i would do it <laughs> that would make sense so anyway yeah we've we've wasted another hour um we'll finish up a few things on the uh, congressional hearing next week and uh maybe i'll look at some of these older congressional hearings and i can compare and contrast although don't hold your breath and uh <laughs> the wilson memo we will we will yeah we want to talk about that yeah, yeah that's an interesting thing sort of that is interesting yeah sorry sorry everyone out there the best thing we didn't talk about today. yeah i never heard of it before we'll hit it next week though yeah yeah it is yeah. good it's got some possibilities but we'll we'll see what we think next week all right that's it let's wrap it up thanks for listening to the latest episode of the alien probe podcast we welcome comments questions or requests to alien probe podcast at gmail.com Visit us on Facebook. See our website, alienprobe.net. Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at alienprobepod. Like and subscribe YouTube at Alien Probe Podcast. Just type in Alien Probe Podcast, Doug Anthony, and you'll bring us right up to uh, where we won't get lost in the millions of other probe podcast episodes and store or shows. Excuse me. Thanks to uh, our senior producer, Robert Anthony. And, of course, Dr. Bill. We'll see you next week. Yeah, and I want to thank uh, Germany, France, and Brazil for uh, listening. Because we have, um, yes. we, are, we are charting in Apple Podcasts in those three countries. All right. Yeah, till... send, us, send us some notes. Yeah. See if you want to listen to anything special over there. We'll certainly chat about it. Yeah. Tell us your secrets. All right. Till next yeah. time. Bye-bye. See you.